morning. <clears throat> Thank you everyone for attending this important meeting. Hopefully we will live with a better understanding of the current status of the Canadian confectionery industry. Something like it is very important <coughs> and interesting topic. First of all, I will give you some brief information about Confectionery Manufacturing Associations of Canada. Because Canadian confectionery industry has a strong relationship with CMAC. Um, depending on my research, CMAC is one of the oldest, most respected non-profit national trade associations. It is representing the manufacturing and the first importers of chocolate, um, sugar, confectionery, uh, chewing gum, cough, and uh, portable freeze fresheners. Also, as a national trade association, the CMAC presents the interest of the Canadian confectionery industry and its customers. Now, um, I will move to the Canadian confectionery industry. This industry's products, which include uh, chocolate, sugar candy, chewing gum, and everyday cough drops. By the way, according to 2007 data, chocolate represents 59% in the industry, sugar candy was 20%, chewing gum was 17%, and LED cough jobs uh, were the only 4%. Therefore, it is not hard to see that chocolate is the most uh, important product for the industry. Moreover, generally say that companies in the confessional industry uh, compete on the basis of brand name, advertising, and promotion, products, quality, and the cost. Um, okay, um, next I want to listen to guys' research. Mia, would you tell me something about what would you find? Oh, uh, sure. Um, <coughs> According to my research, uh, by, the, uh, by the year 2009, uh, the Canadian confectionery market had a market value of more than 2.3 billion in US dollar, which is more than 2.6 billion in Canadian dollar. And the market volume reached more than 200 million kilograms. And uh, currently, over 1,700 Canadians work in the industry directly and indirectly in, an, in up and downstream operations. And uh, actually, the market is increasing now, but the uh, growth rate is decreasing like this. And it fell from 2.9% uh, in 2006 to 1.2% in 2009. Also, the industry is growing faster internationally uh, than the domestic market. Uh, according to the market, market value forecast, uh, in 2014, the market value will be 8.3% uh, higher than 2000, 2009, and the market volume will be 3.2% uh, higher. Uh, that's my research. Very good. So now, and then, what is your research? Uh, okay, so what I research on is distribution and outsourcing in the industry. Uh, for the most part of the industry, uh, manufacturers are located in bigger areas like uh, Ontario and Quebec. So distribution is a major factor. So uh, traditionally, uh, manufacturers were used to distribute through local re retailers, which were usually small. But because of the consolidation now, uh, market industry of uh, industry is now dominated uh, by uh, big grocery stores like Sobeys and Loblaws. So they and they prefer to buy through national suppliers, and it has a major effect on small and medium uh, manufacturing of uh, confectioneries. Uh, the next thing I would I research on is outsourcing. It's not very unusual in the confectionery industry to uh, outsource because uh, for some products they need uh, specialized equipment so they outsource their part of production to smaller manufacturers and plus uh, companies like Nestle and Hershey's they outsource their production to Mexico for the sake of uh, low labor cost. This is my research. Awesome. Thank you. So Amanda, would you really like to share with us? I'm going to be talking to you about the value chain and specifically the value chain activities um, for the confectionery industry. 
Um, the primary activities are the inbound logistics, which would be receiving sugars and cocos and other materials to make the chocolates and candies. In the operations, primary activities is the process of allocating the raw materials to make the finished goods. And so it would be an example, um, cocoa beans, receiving them, turning them into a form of liquid chocolate, mix, mixing that form of liquid chocolate with some butter, sugar, and milk, and slowly drying the mixture to make chocolate bars. Marketing and sales would be TV ads, promotions in retail stores, and competing on price. Um, the confectionery industry spends a lot of money on these activities specifically. Outbound logistics would be warehousing and shipping the candies, the gums, chocolates, um, to department stores, grocery stores, convenience stores, and candy stores. And then there are support activities, such as infrastructure of the firm. Um, this would be this would be a, a company who is committed to free trade and other um, social programs. Human resource management, the training required for new employees to know how to do their jobs properly. Technology development in, the, in this industry would be artificial and natural sweeteners systems, in which are constantly being developed to be better. Procurement, which is purchasing the cocoa and the sugars to create the chocolates and other confections. And that was my research. Great. How about you, Xiao Yi? I'm going to talk about the factors affect the Canadian confectionery industry. The traditional Canadian confectionery industry has several advantages, even though it has the advantage of the small size comparing to American and European uh, industries. However, Canadian industry has cheaper suppliers, lower benefits, and labor costs, and weak Canadian dollar. These advantages attract the uh, uh, companies to invest in and grow the industry. Currently, um, the, the rising fuel price increased the price of commodities and uh, the rising price and the, both the rising price and the commodity price affect Canadian companies to exporting. They are losing money and some of them start to close down their plants or even stop their business. For example, how she closed the plants in Dartmouth, Smith Falls and Montreal due to the increasing cost, decreasing capacity and lack of competitiveness and globalization lies. Over 1,200 employees were affected. That's my research. Great. Now, Stephanie, it's your turn. I'm going to tell you about the rising Canadian dollar and its effect on the industry. At first glance, it seems that the rising Canadian dollar would seem like a good thing for the Canadian economy. Um, it's actually good for importers and bad for exporters. Um, this is a big problem for Canadian companies who rely heavily on exports because their products become less competitive in price-wise in the U.S. market. Companies cannot really raise their prices because we need to stay competitive against U.S. companies, so unless the gross profit margin is extremely high, which it isn't in this industry, um, they will actually lose money. Ganon's average gross profit margin for their products is 30.7%. Um, confectionery companies who do not export face competition from cheaper exports. Canadian dollar, the Canadian dollar has not only risen against the U.S. economy, but also much of the world economy. One option would be to purchase more efficient um, manufacturing technologies from U.S. suppliers, but this might be an issue for confectionery companies who don't have enough capital to do so. Um, just. Um, about exporting. Prior to the mid-1980s, the confectionery subsector primarily focused on serving the domestic part market, um, but by 2007, exports had actually surpassed imports, with the United States accounting for 90% of our exports, largely due to the North American Free Trade Agreement. Um, the Canadian confectionery industry purchases the raw materials on the world market, whereas the U.S. companies have to deal with strict regulations. So the rising Canadian dollar could be an advantage to Canadian companies when it comes to purchasing raw materials. Hey, thank you. I'm actually very enjoying your guys' research, so everyone did a very good job. Thank you very much.